Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27 and this is Dean of Doom, the show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wands. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Good Morning Phobos, a megawatt released in 2017 by Sin City 2100, a mapper best known for collaborating with Dobu Gabu Maru on TNT Revolution's Fortress of Bullets. Now, you might be squinting at this crunchy title pick thinking, I don't know, Mount Payne, this doesn't look like much to me. Then, when I tell you Sin City's a vocal fan of TNT Evolution, you might say, yeah, no thanks, I'll pass on this one. But let me stop you before you do. Admittedly, Sin City's visual acumen is in his strongest suit, but mapping is a means to an end for him, and that end is high powered combat. Sin City's best stuff evokes Skillsaw's arcadiness, the Kasali's searing trapcraft, and the speed of Doomer's pure violence. I don't make comparisons like these frivolously. If you want speed, intensity, and lots of carnage, look no further than Good Morning Phobos. Note that I'll be covering the original version, not the 2021 re-release, which contains three map replacements and several new midis. Feel free to give that version a spin, but I've never played it myself. So, here's how the show works. Every map gets one grade for quality and one for difficulty. On the quality side, the grades go from A to F. Grade A levels are fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. Difficulty grades go from X to E, X for extreme, E for easy, a through D in between. Keep in mind, I probably won't have the same ideas about what makes a great level as you do, but that's okay. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is about spreading the joy of doom, so let's do so. Before we start, the rules are we play on ultraviolence and must pistol start each level. I need to play the wad twice before reviewing it. Saves are allowed, and we go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions when it's just not worth it. I play on Z Doom, compatibility set to strict. Now, to the wad. Map 1, Unresolved Business. This green tone tech base is unlikely to hook you on first playthrough. It's very straightforward, doesn't break out any Doom 2 monsters, and clearly telegraphs its ambushes. One of Good Morning Phobos's potential drawbacks is its heavy reliance on Community Chest 4's texture pack, which some people find overused. Looks can be deceiving. Grade C, difficulty D-. Map 2, Silver Labs. Holy cow, that's a difficulty spike. Something you ought to know about Sin City 2100 is he loves hit scanners. Silver Labs is dramatically harder than the opener because it's crawling with undead soldiers. This nukage room is especially rough. The poison floor exacerbates the unavoidable chip damage from zombie security, and a pair of pain elementals show up when you pick up the blue key. At this point, I've played enough Good Morning Phobos to instinctively save rockets for the double head fake ending, which drops you into a Halls of the Damned style ambush, and then springs revenants and cacos on you for touching these yellow bars. Silver Labs is decisively better and more fleshed out than the insipid map 1. Great. B minus, difficulty B minus. Map 3, Waterworks. Waterworks is one of two non Sin City maps in this set. A knee deep in the dead inflected outing that really sticks it to players who miss secrets. There are seven in this map, and one of them is really important. Pressing on these off color bricks will open a switch that unlocks a plasma rifle and another switch that lowers a soul sphere. Without a health buffer and the extra ammo, the red key ambush can be a serious pain. Two Hell Knights, a Revenant, and a Mancubus with a chain gunner contingent waiting outside. The secret SSG thankfully isn't quite as hidden and comes in handy for the heavy stuff near the end. Waterworks actually made me set this megawad down for a while. I dismissed it as mean and poorly balanced, but I assure you, this this map is an outlier. Grade C, difficulty B minus. Map 4, Power Control 2105. Good Morning Phobos's two primary sources of inspiration, besides Sin City's own homicidal muse, of course, are TNT Evolution and Perdition's Gate. The former shows up quite clearly here. Power Control 2105 is a rewrite of TNT Map 3. It steals the title and retains the hub structure and three pronged key hunt, but ratchets up the monster count almost twofold. Perdition's Gate, on the other hand, informs Sin City's monster and secret placement. It's not uncommon in that wad to find a weapon or power up of level breaking potions stuffed in the wall somewhere. Starting now, Sin City swears by this philosophy. From an action standpoint, Power Control is GMP's de facto first map. Around every corner and behind every door, you can expect a formation of baddies ready to rock. Grade B+, difficulty C+. Map 5, Poison Island. I used to hate this one. Poison Island gets off to a noxious start, forcing you to cautiously negotiate trigger-happy hit scanners and bothersome cacos till you lay hands on a chain gun. Despite the easy accessibility of weapons 5 and 6, I never feel safe in this map. All those long sight lines and hit scanners make me nervous, and the mancubi are laid on thick, but nothing bothers me quite so much as the insidious pain elemental ambush at the end. Sin City quietly releases four of them when you pick up the yellow key, and unless you wait for them to come to you, they'll make babies all over the playing field. I have to say, this gym midi is overplayed, which kind of brings the map down, as does this obvious texturing faux pas, but let he who has made his own megawad cast the first stone. Grade B, difficulty B. Map 6, Polluted Playground. This waste dump tech base is a wake-up call for players who aren't on GMP's wavelength yet. It's 
packed with punishing ambushes that catch you off guard while retracing steps, and to the player who scoffs at secrets, it will feel understocked and overwhelming. The outdoor area floods with enemies when you grab the red key, but more dangerous are the chain gunner manned sentry towers. They'll ventilate you if you try to rush through this part. Like I mentioned earlier, part of GMP's acquired taste is the occasional secret weapon. Absent this plasma rifle, polluted playground is going to make problems for you. The trap-heavy final third will do a number on your ammunition, but make sure to save your good rounds for this archvile pinky herd. If given too much leeway, he's liable to revive some folks you'd rather not fight twice. If you've made it this far, stick around. The best is yet to come. Grade B+, plus, difficulty B+. Plus. Map 7, Water Canal. This is standard fare from Sin City. Big rooms with good monster placement, plenty of sneaky ambushes, hitscan squads lighting you up as soon as you open doors, and a few game-changing secrets. Ammo ended up being tight for me this time, I don't remember that being the case before. Truth be told, the visuals here aren't great. The gray, tan, and sickly green don't jive with the watery floor. Also, if Sin City has one shortcoming in the visual department, it's lighting. There's almost no contrast here, making the map look flat and bland. Visuals aside, Water Canal is in bad Bad, but it's forgettable in the scheme of the Megawad. Grade B minus, difficulty B. Map 8, Cooldown. This is the moment I knew I was going to finish Good Morning Phobos. Cooldown is by no means a perfect map, but it's right in my wheelhouse. I love the high body count, no nonsense pacing, wintry theme, which is beautifully complemented by this simmering midi from Jazz Jackrabbit 2. Once again, there are some texturing oddities here and there that could have been ironed out with more testing, and the secret rocket launcher is enough of a quality of life improvement for me to groan at its cueless placement behind this torch. Also, I know there's an arrow on the floor and everything, but I was totally stumped here the first time I played this map. Even for Sin City, this part is very unintuitive. All that aside, Cooldown is a slick and satisfying kickback and relax map, the first in GMP that I'd label a highlight. Grade A-, difficulty B. Map 9, Ancient Evil. Borrowing a tune and some textures from Perdition's Gate, Ancient Evil assails you with a bevy of long-range attackers and loses a pack of pinkies in pursuit right off the bat. The rocket launcher's sitting on a small lip sticking out of the plateau you start on, and you'll need it to break up the hitscanner entourages, gangs of heavies, and closets full of meatballs. I actually really like the visuals here. Sin City picked a nice shade of brown to base his map on, and while it's nothing earth-shattering, I like this library room as much for its looks as the excitement it brings. In the dark room, you can jump into the drainage pit to find light amp goggles behind a faint wall. There's the TNT influence at work. The last fight can get dicey if you burn all your rockets and cells. The pain elementals can be a fatal distraction while trying to cut through this archfile's band of human proxies. This is another map that defines the GMP tone that I know and love. Grade A minus, difficulty B plus. Map 10, Beautiful Disaster. Titled Temple of Blood on the intermission screen, Beautiful Disaster is very harsh on players who don't sniff out the optional plasma rifle and BFG. While I usually tolerate Sin City's secret hiding MO, I have to say these particular examples annoy me, because they're more requirement than bonus. Without the cell weapons, you can pretty much forget about bagging all the kills, because ammo's tight, the map's lone berserk pack is also hidden away in a secret and placed too late to matter, and Sin City unkindly plops a cyber demon right in front of the exit. This recording marks the first time I haven't had to dash past him with my tail between my legs. I do like some of the early fights, but only when I have ammo to deal with them, and historically, I have not. I also tend to grimace at green marble hell maps unless they really distinguish themselves, so it's safe to say I don't dig beautiful disaster. Grade C-, difficulty A-. Map 11, Spider Factory. This industrial hotbed of arachnoid horrors is dense, efficient, and explosive. It's been a minute since I last heard this MIDI, but frankly I wish Sin City had looked a little harder for something to replace it. Spider Factory is highly entertaining. I love foiling this red key double archfile blitz with this invulnerability, and it's a pleasure to fry entire rooms with this much more accessible secret plasma rifle. Boss Spider Mom infights easily, so bring her to her four mechanical knees with a couple of belts from the SSG. All in all, another solid map. Grade B, difficulty B. Map 12, Night Thieves, aka Techno Valley, definitely feels like two partial maps shoved together. The first half is a meek tech base that trickles into a slime cave where nothing happens, but the second half opens the throttle, starting with a vicious shotgunner archfile bushwhack and going out on a sniper palooza of revenants, mancubi, arachnatrons, and zombies, all assisted by an archfile on the ground. I got lucky enough not to die here during recording, but that's unusual. Except in that last room, which seems inspired by Barabo Jr.'s space-themed JPCP maps, Sin City's effort here is lackluster. Grade C+, plus, difficulty B. Footnote, check out these moves. I was able to jump to this rocket launcher even though you're supposed to take a teleporter to it. Map 13, Rusty Station. I'm speaking to the TNT fans in the audience now. 
boy are you guys gonna like this one. Rusty Station is a condemned tech base that builds suspense with jolts of action and some help from Agony Rhapsody. You could probably guess, but Rusty Station doesn't spare the rod for idle secret hunters, and even by GMP standards, it's unrelenting with traps. At times, it seems like you can't take a step without opening a monster closet, triggering a teleport ambush, or springing a platoon of demons in the box. The most jarring of these surprises comes when you pick up the red key and wind up in hell. This is a tense fight, especially if you draw these two arch files into the fray prematurely. If you can get to it in time, the early plasma rifle hidden in the wall can help. Two more nasty arch files will spawn down in the pinky pen outside when you get the blue key, so don't dally. Investigate this now open UAC wall panel to get a BFG, which you can use to liquidate the final area without much effort, especially if you use the invuln carefully. This map smacked me around on first playthrough, but now that I know its tricks, the tables have turned. Grade A-, difficulty A-. Map 14, Base XUZ, a man after my own heart. Base XUZ, or as I like to call it, Base Zuz, is a striking, nocturnal tech base overflowing with foes, including enough zombies to replace all the extras in The Walking Dead. Another loving evolution homage, Base Zuz feels particularly worked on, as if Sin City knew it would be one of his Megawad's keystone maps. His attention to detail does not go unnoticed, especially in the color coordination department. All the Kakos, Revenants, Chain Gunners, Pinkies, and Shotgunners look sharp as heck, and the computer maze slyly uses yellow to warn of an approaching arch file. Note that the computer map will not show you this hard-to-see off-color wall which contains light amp goggles, nor will it point to this life-saving megasphere and cowardly revenant. Also note that no matter how sharp you are with secrets, some of these traps can still overwhelm you. The dynamite finale is a jib-spattered, rip-roaring plasma guzzler made even more manic by the appearance of two arch files. I like to throw them into the mix mid-fight just for the hell of it. This helpless mastermind seems to exist only to impede speedrunners and chickens. Base Zuz is top shelf stuff. Grade A, difficulty A-. Map 15, Dead Zone 2. More a remake than a sequel, Dead Zone 2 is a larger and slightly less annoying rehash of TNT Evolution's 15th map. The loads of hitscan, low availability of health, and the bevy of irritating perimeter prowling revenants make this a surprisingly dicey map. The fights themselves aren't much to write home about. I feel like Sin City cramped his own style by mimicking TNT this time. I like the MIDI though, an LA Sieben track that might as well be its own sequel to Smells Like a Burning Corpse. Take note that the max kill percentage for this map is 88, because Sin City neglected to tag three sectors that should lower to allow monsters to teleport in. Oversight or tribute? You decide. Grade B minus, difficulty B. Map 31, Paradise? Nope, not really. The beginning of this map is one of my favorite parts of Good Morning Phobos. Exploring this doom cute manor for supplies, strolling the soccer field, staring out at the harsh cut of horizon while the cacos amble through the blood red sky and humming along to a beautiful midi. Only doom can make moments like these. up the BFG behind the red door opens the pathway forward. Don't waste any cells on this vacationing spider family because you're about to hit the hard part. A pair of pop-up arch files and Mancubire send City's idea of fair warning before the remarkably nasty second half. Ammo is extremely scarce here, and you're going to be dealing with inconvenient cyber demons, shrewd arch files, and nagging pain elementals, so make your BFG shots count. If you have to say uncle, there's an off-color green wall here with a megasphere, rockets, and cells behind it. I don't believe I've ever maxed Paradise without it. The sniping arachnos, barons, Mancubi, and revenants in this dark grotto are a huge pain in the ass to manage if you can't open fire. And I really resent this last pop-up cyber demon. He's a missile launching cell tax with goat legs. Simple as that. My feelings towards this map inevitably sour by the end, but it's an undeniably good fit for the secret slot, and it's refreshing to see Sin City experiment. Grade A-, difficulty A-. Map 32, Divided Turmoil. Hell yeah, Final Doom represent. Divided Turmoil anthologizes TNT Evolution and the Plutonia experiment in an unexpectedly deft crisscross of vignettes. I spy Well of Souls, Shipping Respawning, Slayer, Abattoir, Mill, wormhole, and probably more that I missed. This is one of Sin City's finest aesthetic exhibitions. His refusal to copy-paste particularly impresses me. These recreations are recognizable to the final Doom fanatic, but sufficiently reimagined to pass as his own work, and that's no easy balancing act. Divided Turmoil isn't quite as difficult as something like Go To It, proportional to the rest of the Megawad, but it's got enough hair-raising fights across a beefy runtime to merit respect. Without the secret BFG, this bloody corridor fight in the Plutonia Wing is extremely unpleasant, as is the ambush in the wormhole basement. R.I.P. Tyhall 
Alderman, indeed. It's a lot better than TNT Revolution's split personality Map 32, but Divided Turmoil does drag a bit and doesn't quite deliver the Hollywood thrills like Sin City at its best. Still a stellar idea for a secret map, though. Grade B+, difficulty A. Map 33, Skulls Facility. Hmm, well this is awkward. Map 33 has no music. Let's give it some. Skull's Facility is a plutonia skin outtake, one of Sin City's less developed efforts. It's fast-paced, but simplistic, with a lot of predictable ambushes involving the Casale's favorites. This ungainly cyber turret at the end can be decommissioned with a secret BFG, and expect to see red in this bullet hell closing ambush. Skull's Facility is for die-hard GMP fans only. Grade C+, difficulty B. Map 16, Hunter's Moon. Alright, this is where Good Morning Phobos really hits its stride. Hunter's Moon features some of the most frenzied and kinetic combat this side of the 2010s. It's no surprise to see Speed of Doom's influence in the aesthetics here, since GMP could almost be called Speed of Doom Light from a gameplay perspective. Hunter's Moon specifically reminds me of SOD Map 18 and 19, which use a lot of crates, vegetation, and a foundation of gray. After punching your way through these ghostly caverns and into the base proper, the sh** will really start to hit the fan. The place is carpeted with chain gunners, revenants, and mancubi, studded with pop-up ambushes, and some of the most aggressive arch files in the WAD so far. The yellow key ambush will draw and quarter you if you're carrying less than 80 cells and or forgot the BFG. Several pain elementals will spawn behind you, and two arch vials appear in the previous room, where numerous heavies and hit scanners are waiting to rise again. This double archy trap and the pop up brigade in the exit room make for a borderline trollish conclusion to an otherwise terrific map. Definitely one of GMP's standouts. Grade A, difficulty A minus. Map 17, Paradox Base. An obvious love letter to Tom Paradox Mustaine and a double shot of nostalgia on the rocks for me, Paradox Base drips with evolutionness almost as much as Map 14, drawing especially on TNT's processing area, with a bit of metal sprinkled in for good measure. This is one of Sin City's fairer maps. The texture variation is nice, and I like what he does with the ceilings. The fights are direct and digestible, with the lone exception of this room with four barons behind fake walls. Even this I can forgive, though, because it feels just like something my favorite iWOD would do. I wear my biases on my sleeve, so I'm happy to confess that Paradox Base might not be as good as I think it is. Grade A-, difficulty B-. Map 18, Deletion. If you still haven't gotten your TNT fix, Sin City's got you covered, with its secret teleporter cabinets, metal interiors, crackling caverns stuffed with spiders, and cyber demon dominated denouement. Deletion is a mill homage, but thankfully it's nowhere near as meandering and dull as that map can be. The blood midi gets this one off to a furtive start, but things escalate quickly, with Sin City packing pinkies, arachnos, mancubi, hit scanners, and a bevy of bony boys into some tight, low-lit spaces. Conserve this megasphere because you'll want to be stacked for the final arena, one of the most memorable and visually appealing rooms in the Megawad. Suspended above a deep blue sky full of stars, your job is to weave through a brute squad of demons, including several sniping spiders and arch files, and press four switches to access the yellow key. Grabbing the card releases a small horde of revenants and cacos, and right after dealing with them, you'll have to face two more arch files and a cyber demon behind the exit door. In this run, I discovered what I believe is empirically the best way of handling them. Deletion will punish the thriftless and the hammer-headed, but I've enjoyed it more with each replay. Grade A, difficulty A-. Map 19, Midnight Express. It's a testament to Sin City's mapping ability that I still enjoy levels he seems to sleepwalk through. Midnight Express is simple and more than a little rehashed, borrowing Map 13's courtyard opening and leaning on Map 16 as an aesthetic reference. I can forgive this incredibly obscure god mode secret on account of the pure entertainment factor it provides in this ludicrous fight, which recalls Plutonia's sewer map slam dance. A break map for both the player and its creator, Midnight Express is a pleasant wind down to the episode. Grade B, difficulty B-. Map 20, Three Ways to Hell. As is often the case with levels that employ Tom Mustaine's infinite, Three Ways to Hell is paunchy, disjointed, and too long. It's like an idea graveyard. Impressions of different tech bases stitched together, joined at the hip with the surprise send-up of TNT's heck. You can gather all three keys and unlock the gate to hell without even touching big parts of this map. The spider mastermind rigmarole and the metal nukage plant in the outdoor section are totally optional. Compared to the rest of GMP's midsection, Three Ways to Hell feels deflated, but it's still not unenjoyable to an evolution aficionado. Grade B-, difficulty B+. Plus. 
Plus. Footnote, this isn't Sin City's finest hour in the texturing department. Hopefully these got a fix in version 2. Map 21, Brave New Enemy. Aside from the awkward conflation of references in its title, this map does nothing out of the ordinary. It's a short and predictable hell episode opener with a handful of juicy, vaguely scythe-like encounters that go down easier with each replay. I recall having ammo trouble in my first two playthroughs, but I don't think that'll be an issue for careful or halfway accurate players. For some reason, I always expect an arch file to show up outside, which I'm guessing is informed 50-50 by instincts and PTSD. Grade B-, difficulty C+. Map 22, Blackout. Another scythe-inspired jaunt, Blackout is a good old-fashioned run and gun. Ironically, surviving the first minute is probably your biggest hurdle here. Sin City rudely pins you between a rock and a shower of bullets when you go for the red key. Even if you triple kill these chain gunners, the pinkies, revenant, shotgunners, and mancubus are not easy to juke, and as soon as you hit the ground, you'll have a skeletal posse on your tail. This invulnerability is a merciful offset for this Archie-led bone brigade. The battle behind the blue gate is a milder redux of Scythe Map 24's pop-up revenant rush, and peeking over this ledge triggers the final hoedown, summoning a cyber demon and still more revenants. I don't know if Blackout earns this Stewboy tune given its highfalutin associations, but the laid-back tenor does kind of work for this map. Grade A-, difficulty B+. Footnote, I found a softlock. You can jump into this secret nook without shooting this switch, which opens your only way out. Tisk tisk. Map 23, The Cursed Asylum. It takes brass balls to sell real estate and to borrow one of Scythe 2's most memorable MIDI selections, but somehow Sin City pulls it off. The Cursed Asylum is the most unsettling map in Good Morning Phobos. Drenched in bloody decor and packed with pitiless set pieces, this lunatic abattoir is one of the Megawad's most vivid attractions. Its deranged blend of grindhouse and body horror is amplified by its forlorn soundtrack, and the combat is some of Sin City's finest. Returning players will flourish, but I encourage first-timers with bad noses for secrets to hold onto their ammo. The Cursed Asylum has a long list of encounters that stuck with me. The blue key snafu, the stomach churning moment when you realize the inmates have been released, the double mastermind rumble, the rancorous red key ambush that a timely invulnerability can mute, and this chaotic arena full of BFG fodder, revenant snipers, and a cyber demon led garrison of uglies. I applaud Sin City for stepping out of his comfort zone. This map stands apart from the rest. Grade A. Difficulty A. Map 24, Skyfall. Taking its name from Adele's Academy Award-winning song about how James Bond killed a bunch of cyber demons, Skyfall is a vertigo-inducing slugfest that'll take newbies to task. Littered with pop-up ambushes, wicked teleport traps, and pervasive chain gunner snipers, Skyfall builds to a truly ferocious closing act. If I'm worth my salt as a video editor, you should see me punching stuff right now. I highly recommend finding the secret berserk and using it recklessly. Managing the ending requires planning and resources, and this map is a major ammo drain. You could roll the dice with infighting, but it's safer to have a BFG and a rucksack full of cells and just purge the swarming finale before things get too crazy. Without the free invul, this map would definitely mark in the X range for difficulty. You can't ask for much more from a Sin City map. High intensity, trippy visuals, and no mercy. Grade A, difficulty A. Map 25, Brimstone Warehouse. This cameo map from Imp Boy 4 feels like a misstep, but I fault Sin City for that more than Imp Boy himself. Brimstone Warehouse interrupts GMP's escalating third act with a resolutely linear and unchallenging plot that showcases a finer hand for detailing than Sin City's. Then again, Imp Boy didn't have to make 31 other maps after this one. The Rocket Launcher, Plasma, and BFG are unavailable, so most of the map ends up being SSG cleanup or infight ring around the rosy. The enigmatic Life's a Party secret is worth tracking down, and I don't know of a reliable way to survive the optional Mega Armor teleport ambush without ducking into this secret cubby. Without it, you're forced to retreat from the Archfile's fire magics down behind these columns, which gets finicky. I don't recommend trying it. Sin City replaced this map with one of his own in the 2021 re-release. Probably for the best. Grade C+, difficulty B+. Minus. Map 26, Knee Deep in Red. A feral bastard child of Doom 1 and late stage alien Vendetta, Knee Deep in Red blew my doors in the first time I played it. I tend to dislike maps this inclined to wanton brutality, but there are so many memorable and invigorating fights here that I can't help but revel in the mayhem. The first oh sh moment is this Revenant's Abumafu closet, which I hope you saved rockets for because the SSG doesn't cut it here. Through the red bars and up the elevator is a scorching reimagining of E1M1's computer room, followed by a hellish atrium with two arch files and a host of other evil. Down the hallway, a spider mastermind sits plotting under an E2M4 crusher with two more arch files sitting behind her, and then comes the blue key trap, which is bar none the hardest fight in one of GMP's hardest levels. Take a look.
I'm gonna say this BFG invuln secret is mandatory, because the ammo you'll lose if you go without isn't worth your pride. This hellkeep is a pushover thanks to another invuln down in the Bloody Mary moat, but after that, there's still this double cyber brigade and an army led by three brainy arachnids blocking the exit. Knee Deep in Red is punishing, but thrilling. Definitely one of those maps that first-timers just have to accept a kick in the ass from. Grade A minus, difficulty A plus. Map 27, Molten Genocide. Like the Cursed Asylum, Molten Genocide is one of Sin City's successful mood pieces, helped along by its Resident Evil MIDI famously used in Speed of Doom's second map, and its affinity to Valiant's Human Taxidermy Hell episode. Ironically, I dig this brand of Orange Inferno a bit more than Valiant E4. This flesh and metal void walk is especially creepy. The map starts hot, but can be tamed with free and vulnerability, and you can bite off the rest in small pieces. A handy BFG is tucked in this Bloodfall, which can be lowered with the same switch that calls this lift. Without it, this hectic double archfile scrum can turn into one of the map's messier fights. The Revenant, Mancubus, and Cybe arena is bloody good fun, and I always find myself willingly rushing through the blue key room to make it more interesting. Molten Genocide is a calm before the storm, much more relaxed and atmospheric than Sin City's usual. Grade B+, difficulty B+. Map 28, Purgatory Fortress. Cue the Breaking Benjamin because Purgatory Fortress is hard rock all the way. This excoriating hellish plaza urges you to play dangerously. Scoot around this maze to get your hands on a BFG, vaporize some lackeys on the way to the three keys, and when you got them all, hurry to the teleporter located behind the Spider Mastermind garage to get a secret involve, and manhandle the revenants, hell nobles, archviles, and cyber demons that thought they could spoil your party. Purgatory Fortress is tight, fast, and angry, propelling you towards the penultimate map like Evil Knievel through a ring of fire. Grade A minus, difficulty A minus. Map 29, Hybrid Excalibur. This map would make King Arthur and the Round Table sh their britches. Hybrid Excalibur's monster count nearly exceeds the combined total of the second and third biggest maps in GMP. Today I can beat it in under an hour only because I know where all the secrets are, and even with that knowledge, Hybrid Excalibur is still the hardest map in Good Morning Phobos. Without this secret invuln and early BFG, the Blue Skull Key Firewalk is an ungodly nightmare. Four archviles and a cyber demon out in the open. If you don't want to camp by the front door like a baby, this stronghold is a hit scanner hell that only the BFG can reliably extinguish. You'll want to save health and cells with the spider mama at the end of the bridge, and for the next room, which is full of chain gunners, revenants, and lava. When you go for the BFG, two archviles barge in and there's another cyber behind them. If that doesn't sound worth the effort to you, there's a very, very, very secret invuln right here. After that almighty gantlet, hybrid Excalibur starts to lose momentum. I dig Sin City's corrupted reconstructions of TNT's first and final maps, but the last few fights feel spammy and weak compared to what's come before. Worst of all is this limp ending spent waiting for this zombie man closet to empty in front of the exit after you've wasted the obligatory cyber demon guarding it. Hybrid Excalibur's great moments get lost amidst the not-so-great ones. I chalk up its bloat to Sin City catching a case of Magnum Opus Syndrome. Grade B+, plus, difficulty X-. minus. Map 30, Destroyer. All one can aspire to with an icon of Sin Map is not to go out with a whimper, and Destroyer is anything but a whimper. Sin City loads you up with cells, mega spheres, and invulnerabilities, so surf through the chaff on a jet stream of BFG blasts, tiptoe across this invisible candle bridge, nuke the cyber demon, and then find and press this button on the throne to progress. That's easily the hardest part of this map. I have LY203 Productions to thank for showing me what to do here. Blow the icon's mind with your rocket launcher skills and good morning Phobos, is in the books. Grade B minus, difficulty B. So, Good Morning Phobos is scrappy, addictive, and never boring. I know I harped on Sin City's obsession with obscure big ticket secrets, but knowing where to find all the goodies doesn't turn the wad into a power fantasy so much as it evens the odds. GMP is a knockdown, drag out fight the first time through, nearly as tough as Ancient Aliens for comparison. Speaking of which, I thought about calling this map set something like Diet Skill Saw, but that sounds pejorative, and it's also inaccurate. Good Morning Phobos is the Doom equivalent of Hack and Slash. Gory, direct, and in your face. If you want a megawad that embraces kick in the door, no holds barred action, then you need Sin City 2100 in your life. He's one of the most underrated combat designers of the 2010s, and he deserves three cheers for completing this huge project almost entirely by himself. Also, any friend of TNT Evolution is a friend of mine. My final grade for Good Morning Phobos is an A-. GMP has a rather high average difficulty grade, but since it pretty much tops out at the midway point, I'm gonna give it a B+, placing it just above Valiant. Now for my Dean's list. Valedictorian, Map 23, The Cursed Asylum. Salutatorian, Map 14, Base Zuz. Class President, Map 29, Hybrid Excalibur. And the dunce cap goes to Map 10, Beautiful Disaster. Good Morning Phobos also earned itself the honor roll treatment with the following maps making the grade. Map 8, Cooldown. Map 9, Ancient Evil. Map 13, Rusty Station. Map 31, Paradise. Map 16, Hunter's Moon. 
Map 17, Paradox Base. Map 18, Deletion. Map 22, Blackout. Map 24, Skyfall. Map 26, Knee Deep in Red. And Map 28, Purgatory Fortress. Thank you very much for watching. Please feel free to share your thoughts on the wand down below. I'd love to hear what you think, and I'll heart your comments to let you know I've read them. I also want to thank longtime viewer Dragoon and Regalia for suggesting I play this megawatt a little over a year ago. It's a sleeper hit, and I'm happy to spread its gospel. Now, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my generous patrons. AR, Aaron Allen, Agu XYZ, Akali, Alec Wehrman, Alexander Sumenkoff, Alex Topfer, Alex Max, Bo Higginbotham, Builder Sith, Bitefire, CK, Kappa Bitch, Captain Wave, Kali Bluefin, Cheese Wheel, Chris Duthat, Chris O'Neill, Christopher Hart, Christophine Place, Crafty One Cal, Dan, Dave Davidson, Delirium, Dorothy Miller, Egg Boy, Ember, Emma Essex, Faithful, Felix Wilson, Francis T218, Furnace, General Roasterock, Glenn Marmon, Griffin Upchurch, Have a Seat, Holy Hell Revealed When, In Captivity, Jeff Hibbert, Jeff Sherilla, Jose Ballestero, Josh Ballard, Just Some Schmuck, Just Great 98, Camille Bernadotte, Killplane, King of Insanity, Leon Staten, Logan Lazalda, Mark Rowland, Master Drew 117, Matt, Matthew Gower, Michael Akins, Mixer, MK2021, Moko Mothman MM47, Mosicon, Mr. Meme 1990, Myolden, Neurometry, Nick Machado, Knights 108, Number 26, Omnibot, Orion Burke Pool, Painful Hill 72, Philip Coffey, Pyro Shi, Randy A, Reese, Roadworks, Rune, Sega Monkey, Sid Menon, Stonemason, Stupid Nick, Tara Kushino, The Bell Tolls, The Dinosaur Heretic, TJG 1289, Trilby Trillion, Turbine 2K5, Ultra Cow, Vertigo, Why Bemo Not a Crab, William Huber, and Simon Coos. Thank you. I appreciate you all. This is Mount Payne 27, and I'll see you all in the next episode of Dean of Doom.